Hello everyone, welcome to this Subboarder video where we're going to be giving you a review of the Starboard Ace Airfoil Board. This is the inflatable version of the already very popular Starboard Ace Foil, which is a great multi-sport foil board that's got many of you into downwind foiling, paddling up on flat water, sup surf foiling, and a bit of light wind winging action as well. So we've been lucky enough to be using this for a good few months. This is a pre-production model. So bear in mind, there might be some subtle differences that you'll see on the Starboard website, maybe compared to this. The sizes that they've done these boards in, this one that we've been using it is the 610 by 21 at 100 litres, that's 4.75 inches thick. They also do a bigger version, that's 78 by 22 inches wide, 4.75 inches thick. And the board retails at £1,149. And this board, the 610, weighs 6.85 kilograms. Before we jump into the main review, remember, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please give it a subscription. There's loads of videos that go on there weekly. And also check out Subwater Pro, where there's loads of extra videos that you don't see on YouTube. And also check out videos where we've compared aluminium versus carbon foils. You'll find that quite interesting because I will refer back to it in this video. And definitely check out the original Ace Foil board review from Starboard, which we've done, because you need to watch that one as well, because I will be referencing that board quite a bit in this review. Now, for most of you watching this video, you'll probably be aware that a lot of the foil boards are going much longer and thinner. They offer you way more glide. You do get up onto foil much earlier. They are going to suffer a little bit more instability the narrower you go, but they are generally being used with quite big foils and that does give you a lot more stability. So whether you're trying to get up on your foil in really light winds with your wing, get into some downwind, really small estuary bumps, paddle up on flat water, or catch the smallest of waves out back, then these longer base foil boards really are a very good option. Now we have already spoken a lot more about that in the hard composite ace foil board review we did. And to be fair, the same stuff can be done with this type of board. Starboard have tried to mirror copy that board and give you this, the inflatable version, which is obviously gonna be a little bit more transportable and there's lots of other pros, which I'm gonna say about in a bit. But let me now jump into some of the features on this board that really do make it stand out from the other boards on the market. So looking at the rocker line to start with, you'll notice there is a fair amount of rocker to this board, a bit of nose kick and actually a bit of tail kick as well. Looking at the top of the board, the first thing you'll notice is the carbon plate on the top of the deck. So it's quite a big section. And inside that plate as well, you have got options to put foot straps on. So they've got inserted threads inside to have a Y setup foot strap at the front and a central strap at the back. You'll see that when you go to bolt the foil on, you actually bolt the foil onto this carbon plate. So you have a very direct feel. The way you actually put your foil on is the same as the original airfoil board that we reviewed from Starboard a few years ago. I'll speak about that again in a second. Let's just keep on with the top of the deck before we move on, because also a major feature is these big, foam, very hard raised edges around the board. Now these are great for wedging your feet against, also giving the board a little bit more stability, I think a bit more stiffness as well. The way they finished off into the deck pad and glued it all on does look quite smart. Winging, paddling up on flat water, these sort of scooped sides that you can get your feet against or your heels against really do help give you the extra stability. Nice different textures on this EVA pad. You've got a central sort of smooth lined surface down the middle. You've got diamond crocodile style skin EVA on the sides. Smooth lined here halfway back and then back to your diamond. And right at the back, you've got a small sort of foam kicker as well so you can get your foot against. So all of those sort of deck pad difference in textures when you're riding them bare feet, you can really feel the difference between the center and the sides without even looking at where your feet are. And when it comes to foiling, especially if you're a lower level rider, that sort of thing does make a difference to getting up on the foil and feeling more comfortable. 
The construction of this board is Starboard's top of the range construction. So you've got welded rails, you've got several layers of PVC, you've got all the stuff you need to make a really hard wearing, long lasting inflatable paddle board, but put into this foil board. The inflation pressure that this board takes is 15 to 18 PSI. I'm sure it can take way more than that, to be honest, but it does not need to be inflated any more than that at all, because it does give you an incredibly stiff feel on the water which I'm gonna jump into again in a minute. That inflation valve is at the back and you've also got a stainless D-ring leashing point at the back as well. Turning the board over and looking at it on its side, you'll see it's got a very similar shape to the original Ace Foil composite board. Still got that pulled in pintail at the back, still the same sort of nose shape. Obviously you haven't got as much nose top deck shape as you would do on that composite board, because with inflatable paddle boards, you are obviously limited to what you can do very much on the top and bottom of the board. Looking at the bottom of the board here, you can see the hard sort of PVC strip edge that they've put along down the side of the board. Doesn't go right to the back of the board, but goes quite far back and probably far enough back to actually get yourself up onto the foil early. You will see there's a central carry handle on the bottom of the board, but in here, this is where when you inflate the board, you will put this foam section in to cover up the foil hole. I've left it out now just to show you how this is done in here. So this plate inside in here, that is the carbon plate. You can see exactly this is where the foil bolts onto. So it goes straight onto that carbon plate and then your foot is riding directly above that. So the way you put this board together and inflate this board is you mount your foil to the carbon plate first off. This one that we've been using, the mountings go through the bottom and into the nuts at the top. Then you put the closed cell foam section around the mast and then you inflate the board and then the board pops up and closes off the gap that you see here. Now I will say we have used this board with other foils and you can fit them with M8 foil bolts through these um, mast tracks. As long as they have the sort of T-nut that fits in the gap, which all the other ones that we have here did fit. Some of them are smoother than others. Some of them might have to adjust the bolts so they fit perfectly and don't stick out that much, but you can make other foils fit on this board, which is a really good thing. So jumping into the juice of this review. So we've used this for flat water paddle ups, downwind runs, sup foil surf sessions, wing sessions in light winds, and to be honest, where it's got a little bit windier, I'm just gonna jump straight into what it was like to use this on the water and also give you the pros of this board straight away because there are so many of them. The first thing you will notice is the stiffness the board has under your feet. It has an incredible, I'm gonna say it again, incredible way of feeling stiff. This does not feel, straight in with a massive pro, this does not feel like you're using an inflatable board of any kind. Whether you're in the sort of sponginess under your feet, there is none because you are standing on a carbon plate and also in the direct feel to the foil. It's very, very direct because that foil is bolted onto the carbon plate. So it's an incredibly stiff and really well performing board in that sense. It doesn't feel like it's an inflatable board. Whether you're getting up in light winds with your wing, trying to paddle up onto foil on flat water or get onto the smallest waves with your sup surf foiling, that has an incredibly quick and light and responsive pickup onto foil. Yes, don't get me wrong, there is still a difference between the Ace Foil blue carbon version compared to this one, but it's not a massive difference. And it is an inflatable board. You've got to remember, this is an inflatable board. So the work they've done with the carbon plate, the way that the foil is mounted onto that carbon plate, and the edges that release the water of this board, really do allow this board to come up onto foil nice and early. The rocker line shape of the board really does work well. If you're touching down in choppy or gusty winging conditions or downwind foiling, the nose rocker allows you to pop the board back up. Yes, maybe if you are on the composite hardboard, it would be a little bit more quicker and more forgiving to pop back up, but it doesn't drag too much and it doesn't suck you down. It does give you the momentum to pop yourself back up onto foil. Also the tail rocker as well allows you to initiate that foil to get up onto foil when you're paddling on flat water or catching those waves. So the release of the board was good as you could get up onto foil. We could still paddle it up on flat water. 
The blue carbon version will be quicker, will require less paddle strokes, but this did exactly the same, but it did take a little bit longer to get up onto foil. These raised EVA edges really do help with extra stability, giving you that planted feel when you're moving in choppy waters, maybe not onto foil, or if you're doing winging maneuvers, doing jibes, you have got that position that your heels naturally fall into in the curve of this EVA pad. The weight of the board is a big pro and that definitely needs a mention. So this one that we've used, the 610, weighed 6.85 kilograms. The same equivalent board in the blue carbon is about 6.7 kilograms. So it's very, very close in weight. So that's a really nice thing to consider if you're buying into a certain board, you haven't really got to worry about the weight being an issue with this inflatable board. Now we didn't actually use this board with foot straps, but the way that the inserts have been finished, the stainless or aluminium that's been put into the carbon plate looks very nice, a cut off and holes through the EVA deck pad, all finished off really smartly. The board, to be honest, is very quick to inflate, even if you're putting it to the higher recommended pressure of 18 PSI, still well under two minutes to get the air in. And the massive pro for this, the biggest one I feel, is the fact that you have not got to worry about this board. When you're putting it down, when you're getting it ready, when you're trying to get out of maybe a rocky section that you've just been foiling, this is an inflatable board, and it's a tough inflatable board opposed to a blue carbon sort of composite board where you're constantly worried about where you're putting it down, even when you get out of the back of the car, this, you just whack it down and go and have fun in your session. And for me personally, not to have to worry about my kit so much, I do actually find that way more relaxing. So there's tons of pros to this board. Are there any cons? Yeah, there are some cons and things you need to be aware of. So let's get into those now. Yes, there is going to be a compromise between the full carbon version compared to this inflatable board, but it's not actually a massive compromise and Starboard has done a very good job of really making sure that compromise is as small as possible. The handle on the bottom of the board does work when you're carrying the board out and it obviously doesn't drag the board down that much because we can still paddle the board up on flat water. But personally, we'd like to see it on the top of the board or even have an option where you could remove the handle quickly because a lot of the times with this width of board, I can even carry it under our arm and the handle isn't needed. So is it something that's needed? I'll let you decide the owners out there. It is something that works and obviously it doesn't slow you down that much, but it obviously would be quicker if we didn't have it at all. There's obviously pros and cons to that itself. This current board and the way that this one is bolted together with the torque screws going in from the bottom does mean that you can't change it when it is inflated. So if you want to change your mast foot positioning, you have to deflate it, take the closed cell foam out, move forward or back, and then put that back in and reinflate it. It still doesn't take that long, but that's definitely something that we've noted on this one. Obviously, when it comes to moving your foil, if you're using it without foot straps, it's not so important because you can adjust your feet. But if you're riding this board with foot straps, it's gonna be a little bit more crucial to making sure your foil is in the right place. And another con and observation, we also noted this one on the original airfoil board, is when you use your foil, you are gonna to need to use a longer mast, or you're gonna to need to bear in mind that your mast is going to be shorter because it is going through to the top of the board instead of the bottom of the board. For many of you, if you've got 90 centimeter mast, that's not gonna be an issue, but if you're learning and you're riding a 70 centimeter mast, just bear in mind it's gonna drop down to like a 60 centimeter mast, so you are gonna be riding a lot closer to the water. Is it a massive con? There is gonna be drawbacks, but it's something you can be aware of. Maybe you might need to upgrade for a longer mast on your existing foil package at the moment. So this is an inflatable board and it does go in a bag, but the bag is still relatively big because of the carbon plate so obviously a slightly shorter or squarer shape is much easier to transport and also you're not going to have to worry about getting that damaged at all when you put an airline and you would do if you obviously had a hard composite board and lastly i want to talk about some general notes and feelings from us on this board and when we were reviewing it so when we were using this, we were actually using it with quite a big, wide 1700 starboard foil on a long aluminium mast. It was a 92 centimeter mast, because bear in mind, you lose that thickness in the board. Definitely having an aluminium mast and a big foil especially does make the board feel a little bit less forgiving, like it would do with any board. And I don't think it's the board itself, but just bear in mind, if you want to have a really 
good solid connection to your foil you're probably better off if you can upgrading to a full carbon setup now that's true with any board but this one because you're going to be running it with a slightly longer mast anyway having a carbon mast would make the board feel even better so it was a interesting observation it wasn't really the board's fault at all but if you could go for a high modulus carbon mast it would make the board feel even tighter and nicer to use if you want to find out more about aluminium versus carbon foil setups there's a really interesting video on our youtube channel so definitely check that one out so to summarize and give you our thoughts on who would best suit the starboard ace air foil if you're a foiler looking for a longer thinner base board whether it is composite or inflatable this board does need to be considered you're going to be able to do a wide range of disciplines winging sup foiling downwind foiling paddling up on flat water and the way this board does feel in the water a lot of you do need to consider it especially at the price point at 1149 pounds it is a good price point of board yes the composite blue carbon version of this is only 400 pounds more expensive but the pros this give you almost outweighs the negative of it not being so quick to paddle up or not so responsive because it is inflatable because what they've done with this carbon plate is going to allow so many of you to get into foiling these types of boards and the ability to whack it in a bag go traveling around the world and not have to worry about what condition it comes out the other end is a massive massive draw for many of you out there so you could be getting into foiling you could be an intermediate foiler you could be an advanced foiler wanting to do lots of disciplines the starboard ace airfoil is going to be a board that i think a lot of you need to see and we are very very impressed with how this board felt on the water this is definitely one of the top picks from us for starboard this year we look forward to seeing how they grow this range into the future but this is a really nice all-round board that a lot of you are going to be interested in this year. Thanks very much. We'll see you on another video. Check out Sup Border Pro if you haven't already, our subscription service. Give us YouTube channel a subscribe and give this video a like if you found it useful. And if you find it complete rubbish, get a comment in the section below and let us know how we can improve it for future. Thanks very much. We'll see you later.